So far we know the lotus flower uh, grows in a swamp, only in a swamp. And the swamp is, is like the world, cloudy, muddy and everything, and, yeah, and bank robbers and everything. And the flower, when it, when it uh, is the only flower that we know where the parent and the child, the stamen and the, they spring forth at the same time. So it's a simultaneous cause and effect. Also, this flower, when it, when it blooms in the swamp, when it blooms, the, the, the muddy swamp, right at the stem of the flower, the water becomes clear, enlightened. That's a, a symbol of enlightened. I don't, let me see. <clears throat> What kind of sound comes out of this after 3,000 years of not Sometimes when you play and don't look at the horn, this, this one of these screws, they, they work and they come out and it's really high and this will come off. You try to, any one of these you have to watch. Because you're always doing like that and the screw starts or this way or that way. This one too. We, 10 o'clock we play? Yeah, I think so. Thank you. We love you, man. Hey, you. hey, Mirren. Don't forget to talk to Tudor. He said, man. No kidding. It's his first time. Oh. Music. It was, it was his mother who was one of the. Oh. What I have there. Huh. Patty. Hey, mommy, I'm on Besito. She's doing good, man. She was asking for you. Yeah. Sending her love. What do you give? as a present to life in celebration of life, when life has it all. And I would say the effort of being original is like, thank you. Can you talk over the music? You can call this 
make a reflection of what I call something that's before anything begins, existence began. That's what a song, before it, it existence, and this is in the realm of potential. And the potential cannot be given or rehearsed. The potential has to be And the thing is, to find the potential of anything <laughs> the, all these musicians have to be courageous and um, humble enough to not want to flaunt their musical credentials. Sometimes you put on display things that you have learned in packages. And the packages are supposed to be consumed by applause and sales. And there has to be an, an expectant with this package. But we, if no one knows what's coming, it's gonna take as much courage for the, the audience to seek the unexpected as we, we are thinking we're finding it. Finding, finding the, the way to use potential. I think I have to start with um, the most powerful thing that happened on uh, when on the occasion of um, uh, the passing of Wayne's wife of 26 years, who, um, you know, uh, 
died in a plane crash. That I think most people that have followed Wayne's life know about it, you know, this tra tragedy that he, at that crucial moment, I think because of uh, his, um, you know, at that time, 30 years of practicing Buddhism, he understood that to affect her life in a very positive way, he had to actually become happier. And so he vowed in front of everybody on her memorial that he was going to become even a happier man in order to affect her life. I think that he made that decision, that moment, that he wanted to take risks again, you know, in, in, in this realm of his life. The, the perception that the tragedy is uh, temporary, <coughs> that tragedy is temporary, and then the person that you lost or that left still exists and in the path, the crossroads of eternity, there will be an encounter, uh, uh, not just again, but um, a, an eternal account, encounter. And uh, that eternal en encounter is the, your perception of the constant instead of the temporary. It, it, and it takes some, uh, some pain to uh, expand one's perception sometimes, because you, you're letting go of your limitations. So that's, you know, uh, a, legitimate, a legitimate detach. <laughs> uh, just like when you take a bandage off. It will sting when you take the bandage off, but the healing, if you don't take it off. I was a, just a young local musician in Chicago uh, trying to find out everything I could about, about you know, modern jazz so that I could learn more and, and uh, grow in my own development. Um, but I do remember seeing one album jacket that had a face on it and it said Wayne Shorter. So by the time I met him, Wayne was already uh, a hero of, of mine. And, uh, uh, one of the musicians that was considered one of the young lions of that time, you know, he and Lee Morgan also, who was with him, with Art Blakey's band. He was right on the edge of, of something, and that he was taking, taking chances all the time. And, and that, that he would, he, he um, uh, was, was constantly inventing music for the moment. Wayne has a beautiful analogy about uh, a person being mentored by someone, which is, he always says it's like uh, having a mentor. It's not following someone per se. You know, it's, he, he um, establishes an a analogy that I think it's great, which is when the father takes a son to watch the parade and he puts, the, the son cannot see the parade. So he puts the son in his shoulder. At that moment, the son then starts seeing further than what the father can see. He, he starts telling something to the father, and this is what's happening with this quartet. I, I remember getting, getting the call for, to come, and it was like, okay, piano, burning, let's go, you know, something like that. You know what I mean? You know, so I got to, to the studio, and we were recording. Actually, he was sort of like auditioning me in the studio. He was doing Alegria record. So when I get there, there's this part in Vendiendo Alegria, and I remember, for me, it was just like, okay, it's like, I don't remember if it was B flat, let's say it was B flat major, or A major, I forgot that. But it's like, it, it was a chord like that. And um, he said to me, I, we play that. And he goes, stop the recording. He said, Danilo, 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 can you, can you put some water in that chord? Put water in that chord. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, right? I was like, what? I don't, I don't really know what you mean. I didn't say that, but I said, put on. So we did it again. And apparently, I didn't do very good because he said, okay, let's do another piece. 
And I was like, oh, I, I don't know how to put water in a cord, okay. So I went back to my room and I was thinking about this, thinking, 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 thinking. And all of a sudden I said, okay, I'm gonna put the TV on, put the TV on. And there was a commercial, so da -di -da -di -di -da -di. it was like fifth and a bunch of fifth. And all of a sudden, like a soap commercial. And I was like, wait a minute, that's it. Oh, let me make chorus out of fifth. So we come back next day, the studio, and, uh, and that part came in. I was really, 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 really looking forward to it. And he came in. Let's do that tune again. He started in that, Vendiendo Alegria. And that part came in. I think it was A7 or something, or A major. And I played the chord. And he goes, ooh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Water in the chord. But he said, but now you got to look. You know what I mean? Like, look down like that. And, and when you look down like that, you got to be able to see or do you, you gotta be able to see bottom. That water has to be completely clean. And I, that was it for me. It's like, oh man, this guy is out there. This is gonna be a trip. Actually, literally flew. I am sure of that because I moved out of from the piano away, and I, when I looked down, I saw them. But I, I saw myself, and I went back. It was very, 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 very strange. And I told Wayne, Wayne, I was flying today. I felt like I was there, and he said, "That's what I was telling you that with Miles Davis. We were flying all the time." <laughs> Okay, so now we, we are taking a little part of a piece called She Moved Through the Fair. I don't even know, sometimes we just hint into, into, into like, a, like, a, like a sign on the door to move into a place of, a new place, into the unknown. And we'll see what happens.
We, we have to play like we don't know everything. We don't know. So the mystery of it is way better than explaining it. Remember when King Kong died and they, the guy said, they said, they lost their God. Or something like that, they lost their God. And he said, no. He didn't, he didn't, no, they didn't lose. He said, Kong was their mystery. They needed a mystery. And that's the mystery of themselves. Maybe a creation of new vocabulary that has no words yet, but that has movement. You know. <laughs> It's not really music. It's not. It's just something else. introduction but it's not not just a piece in itself and then that piece is uh she moved to the fair <laughs> so when we play some music like this we want to see what it's like to start playing sounds that seem to have no planned design, no, no uh, uh, recognizable destiny. And when these sounds start to intermingle, I've become more and more convinced that there's no such thing as a coincidence and no such thing as a mistake. I think what we call a mistake is uh, actually a start. I feel that uh, Wayne's uh, journey in, let's say, quest for um, you know, um, the unknown and, and having the, you know, and risk-taking and all of that. He's uh, 
quest to um, actually inspire people to have the courage to, to deal with all that's unexpected that's happening in the world has brought these people to his life, I feel. Um, because they, in their unique way, it's the most, um, um, let's say, it's the most perfect combination of people. The first uh, gig they played together, we had just moved, Wayne and I had just moved from California to Florida. I was waiting for the, the truck, literally, with the, you know, with our stuff, and I couldn't be on that particular um, concert. And uh, I remember Wayne coming back with an excitement that I had never seen, knowing Wayne for many years. I feel like this, this period in his life, you know, and now he's gonna be 80 this year. There were never really bands. Or even the weather report, that being the longest, but then on his own terms, under his name, uh, it, this is the this first. This is it, yeah. Which is funny, you know, this quarter of his life, you know, after three score, and so. When you see that and and then you go back and see those ones where he's like super young with Miles <laughs> in Europe yeah. playing, and they're burning, right? Mm -hmm. And he's playing amazing. And just to see how he developed over a long arc. Because in a way, I feel like I met Wayne in, in 1987 when I bought Live at the Plug Nickel. Ooh. And you know, Miles Davis or, or Ugetsu, you know, or Blakey. And then I got Juju. You know, so it's almost like, it's as if I had known him already. Did you take, you use this for the gig, right? I, I, the little thing that shows which side fell off, so I don't even know anymore. Man, you're a caboose. Look. A lot of people learning from um, Ryan Blade. The drummer is coming up, and uh, the way he fuses within the other players, and then also John Patitucci is coming along with some like un uninterrupted contribution from the bass instrument without feeling that the bass must be. Uh, Basically, a backbone and a this is this is a, this is a, a timekeeper, a sound timekeeper, and the drummer used to be a timekeeper. But um, what we're actually doing too together, like playing like this, has nothing to do with ESP. You know, this extrasensory perception, uh, extra, like there's something extra. Um, uh, in, in some people, and there's nothing extra in some other people. <laughs> and we talk about that. There's certain things that each instrument can do that the other one can't. Otherwise, it wouldn't have to be four of us if one instrument could yeah. provide all of it. All, yeah. you know? yeah. It's not only just the saxophone and the piano, sometimes the saxophone and the bass, yeah. or the two of us are playing, or there was a duo at the beginning of this with the bass and the piano. We're trying to explore a lot of colors and not get not get rotely saying, well, okay, you're always going to play with him and he's going to, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We want it to be fluid, you know? Miles used to say, this, you know, jazz, jazz needs more color. Not, not getting a synthesizer to do it, you know? Need more color and, and, the, and the different kinds of motor. It's a ding, 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 ding. <coughs> John Coltrane wanted that before he died. He wanted more instruments, so did Charlie Parker, to play with more orchestrations. Each member of that band is, has a unique sound. 
And Wayne is such a, a perfect uh, mentor for that partnership that they have that it allows them to, and encourages them to, to explore territories that I'm sure even, even they didn't know w w was possible. And that's also been a freaky thing, like Herbie would come around to the gigs and he really would voice, he said, well, this feels connected to what we did. And for us, that's like, yeah, yeah. you know, really? I mean, you know, for us, that's a, a wild thing for him to say, because those guys really shaped our yeah. thinking yeah. about a lot of things. You know, the whole lineage of what he has seen and experienced. We, you know, from Charlie Parker to Lester Young to, you know, it's, it's Bud Powell. You know, like the, the true history of the music. When, when you say play, play like you want the world to be like. Do what you want, you know, like do what, you know, have courage, marry. <laughs> he, he, he inspired me to get married, you know. Don't be, don't be afraid, you know. He'll call me at 2 o'clock in the morning saying, Danilo, man, watch this movie. And I put the movie on, it was about marriage. And I was like, oh, man. And then next day he said, you know, Danilo, I've been thinking about this. You know, people talk about going to the Mount Everest and all of that stuff as if, as if that's the only way to show courage. I think being married... He always end up there. I think being married really show your courage. And I was like, oh my God, he has an agenda, you know? He wants me to get married, you know? And the question is like, why, what, are we, what, what are we living? He said, the answer to that is to, to do, now, this is a simple answer, but it's, it's, it takes a, to do what you want to do. But what you have to do is interact with other people so that you can do what you want to do. So, because that helps them to do what they want to do. Encourage people to stay together instead of breaking up. Something has to be done with this little orchestra.
was writing something, and it, it was Adam's apple. And because the the, the uh, Alpha line, the is Alpha line and Frank Wolf, he said, he said, could you on this next record, could you give us some give us some grease, give me a little grease, just a little grease, uh -huh. and um, I felt like y y you're not you're not throwing anything away, and. Um, I, I just made up this song, Adam's Apple, and we played it. And there was a, a family across the street who used to uh, babysit for my daughter, Miyako. And the daughter, who was at uh, Marymount College, she, she was going into Marymount College, 18, 19 years old. She said she heard Adam's Apple, and she said, and guess what? She said, my mother and my, my, and my mother, aunt, and everything, they do the, the housework to the, the, with the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, you know. Say, so do the, the housework to that. I'm just gonna go right to what I'm thinking. When I see large audiences and I hear um, big selling groups yelling to the people, put your hands over your head. Then when they do this, in my mind, I see an invisible chain and invisible handcuffs. And put your hands over your head is also synonymous with this is a stick up. You want to please the audience with a well served, well oiled, well um, uh, executed, articulated uh, account of an hour and 90 minutes on stage. When we start to play, and we look at each other sometimes, we say, zero. <laughs> and, um, and in all of our minds, what is it going to be this time? Okay, let's surprise each other. You know, we, we, it's, it's just, you know, thinking. And then things. Boxers used to uh, train to bebop. When Sugar Ray Robinson, the real one, and Joe, they would listen to swing, and they um, trained and moved their bodies in certain ways. That that uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, they said he could hit or defend himself just as much impact backing up, and then uh, uh, the body going to the right to the left, and, and they said. I hear like now, he's not, he's not bobbing and weaving enough. He's, not, he's standing right in front. He's going to get knocked out. <laughs> and uh, he said, that's the two-step thing that, mm, ba, mm, ba, infiltrating one's life and they, you know. He brought the music, like tons of, I mean, a lot of music. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm really nervous now. And um, he came in and he opened the sax and was like, oh, man, I haven't, I haven't seen this. I haven't seen it for a while, you know, and it, the truth, it looked like he hasn't seen, hasn't been haven't been playing the the saxophone. So he got the saxophone out. <laughs> Hardly could get a sound. I couldn't believe it. I was like, and then I said, uh, we were waiting to, to wait for a cue, you know. So he's like going rrr, rrr, trying to get a sound. I was like, whoa. And then all of a sudden I said, Maestro, what? I wanted to be. Four <laughs> and he said, Maestro, what piece do you like to start? And he looked at me like, what? I said, what piece would you like to say? Oh, no, 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 no. Then, you know, then, you know, then, you know he said, you, you can't rehearse the unknown. <laughs> Sometimes when I get on the stage and I look and I see John or Brian or Wayne, uh, 
this is what I go, I go through my mind. I see Brian Blade. Brian Blade. Brian Blade. Brian Blade. And that's what I'm thinking. So, so, so then, right before I'm going to start playing, just the name Brian Blade got so much meaning to me. There's so much hidden information. There's rhythm, there's motivic, there's something there. And I literally would do something like that. Hay mucha Brian ahí, Blade. Brian Blade. And we can check it out. They don't even know what I'm thinking, but we can do something with that. So we set it up. And then I said, well, guys, and, and I got my brother here, so I said, young petty to she, that could be the, the bridge or something. So, Is there a philosophy of practicing and growing better at something like zero gravity? So, no matter what sound, you know, who, who begins, zero gravity allows us to, to just go there. You know, we, we got this from Wayne. Esta noción la tuvimos desde Wayne. And, you know, I, I don't think I've ever asked him specifically what he means by it. You, you open the door and every, it, it, it's already happening. Yeah. You open the door and it's happening, but it has to be not it's familiar happening. You know. He said, you have to o open the door with, with the, I dare you to open the door. But there's no dare if you know you can you can hear the beginning of oh it's familiar oh it's safe to, let's go to this place and uh, but you know that that's a trap too it, it's a trap for some people it's um, the candy store because they 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 want to they want to um, contribute to what's on the other side and be, and become part of the the uh, rewards that come with that. So, um, uh, and they, they become attached to um, uh, something called a guarantee, guarantees in life. And the thing that, that we do is recall what not to do and conjure pictures in the mind and uh, try to trigger the feeling of velocity and flight in the person. Because after the concerts, we get, we get these kind of comments that I felt like I'm flying. This can be expressed in uh, stories that we can tell by playing something called zero gravity. And zero gravity for me is that it's almost like jumping in a swimming pool and not really know knowing if there's water or not, but you just jump fearless, you know. That's the feeling I always get. And it used to scare me, of course, but, but now I, I can't live without that. Zero gravity is my new language. Yeah.
you can't make it happen. These guys were so perfect, so ideally suited to him, not only his music, but as human beings. We became really, it's like it became a family, you know? So I think that evolution of that family has grown over time, and obviously that went straight into the music. write this, this story together, tell the story together. So that challenge of really, you know, making those moves in the moment, the choice and what, you know, where are we and where, you know, where we're we going, we don't know.
compadres. <laughs> okay.